Welcome back to Block TV. Now today we have a special guest. We are joined by Max Cantilio, who is co-founder of Zalika, all the way from London. Max, thanks so much for joining us. My absolute pleasure. Good morning. All right, now Max, you compete, or your blockchain competes against other blockchains, big names like Ethereum. What sets Zalika apart? Okay, so we designed Zilliqa to, to do a number of things, which we felt were very, very important if, if blockchain platforms were, were going to indeed become mainstream. So the first thing that we wanted to solve was scalability, because the throughput rate on a lot of other public blockchain platforms does not allow scalability. And so we designed a a protocol that in fact uses a technique called sharding. It's like a divide and conquer technique, which allows us to process thousands of transactions a second instead of seven to 10. And, and so that was, that was, that's the sort of number one differentiator. The second thing is that we are as a team, very cognizant of security. And we hear every day about, about attacks on, on public blockchain networks and applications. So we also designed uh, Zilliqa to be uh, highly secure, both at a, at a network level, but also at an application level. In fact, we've written our own smart contract language called Scylla, which allows you to formally verify code before you release it onto, onto a network. Um, thirdly, we, we wanted uh, to make sure that our token um, was, was economical for people to use, because without the right economics, we, we can't, we're never going to achieve mainstream adoption. So those were all of the things we set out to achieve, and I'm very proud to say we achieved them last year. Mm -hmm. Now, those all sound like amazing technological advancements. Uh, this seems more geared towards enterprise. Is your blockchain uh, for enterprises, is it for consumers, or, or for both? Actually, we, we believe it is, it is for both. And we have uh, al already shown that um, indeed, if enterprises want to use public blockchains for, uh, for whatever application, and I can, I can maybe later on talk about some of those, then these, these platforms have to be enterprise ready. So we have in fact recently uh, built a, a, a tech team that has a lot of experience in building enterprise grade platforms, but also um, platforms that are usable. You know, these things have to be much, much easier to, to use and engage with than they are today. Um, but also we, we designed the platform so that uh, individual developers could build you know, dis decentralized applications on top of Silica um, and and in, a, in an easy and efficient manner. So, so we've actually designed it so that it's usable by both enterprise and, and consumers. Now, when we're talking about uh, enterprises on the blockchain, we have to talk DeFi. Uh, in your view, is DeFi ready yet? Is it there, you know, especially on the heels of the, of the BZX flash attack that happened recently? Uh, you know, where is DeFi standing today? I think that just as with blockchain technology full stop, we, we're still at a very early stage, okay? We, um, we cannot be overly judgmental about, about things that, that, that sometimes go wrong when we, we appreciate that this is still a really early stage technology. As, I talk, as I've talked about many, many times before, and you're probably too young to remember this, um, it's still 1993 and we're using the Netscape browser. So there's a, there's a long way to go yet. Um, is DeFi customer ready? Well, uh, I, I, I don't think it is, but I think that if we consider that there is already, you know, over a billion dollars locked today um, into, into the DeFi network, then that shows us that the traction is, 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 is growing. Um, yeah. The, the, uh, you know, the incident that we, that we saw happen recently with the flash loan, um, we, we have to understand why it happened. 
and, and why it indeed is allowed to happen. Because if we're going to allow um, flash loans to exist with 30 second time intervals, then all we're ever really going to see is arbitrage on the network. Mm -hmm. And is arbitrage or allowing arbitrage, is that necessarily uh, something that you want to avoid? Or, or if you plan it and you know that it will be used for arbitrage, can you kind of make that, you know, if you look at the, the traditional markets, you know, where essentially it's become millisecond trading uh, and people understand that. Do you, do you feel that with DeFi, you kind of want to move away from, from those traditional, you know, speed-based trading uh, and kind of put the power back in the hands of the people? I think, we, I think we have to carefully consider what utility we want from, from decentralized finance. If we want it to be a utility for high frequency trading, then, then sure, you know, then we have a, an excellent mechanism here for people to play arbitrage. However, uh, in my opinion, decentralized finance is a much, much bigger movement than allowing people to, to, to play, play the arbitrage game. Um, that that doesn't that isn't really going to change the world and make it a better place. Let's let's be honest with ourselves. Um, however, I think that if we look at look at all of the things that constitute decentralized finance, even in its early stage today, you know whether we're looking at prediction markets, whether we're looking at lending, whether we're looking at staking, um, whether we're looking at you know, how, how decentralized finance is really going to have, help the, the gig economy or the freelance markets, then these are, these are applications that really are going to make the world, a, you know, a, a much better place. Um, today, when a lot of people talk about decentralized finance, they're talking about how we can bring financial services on the blockchain to uh, the unbanked and the underbanked. Actually, at Zillica, we have a we have a slightly different view on this because um, we 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 actually believe that that you can um, you, you can maybe start to uh, unbank the bank um, and and I think that the uh, you know the the audience for decentralized finance is not just just the unbanked and the underbanked. It, it's actually also the, um, it's an incredible uh, mechanism for, for helping you know, all of us, frankly. Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting uh, take, unbanking the, the bank. I haven't heard that one before. But uh, you mentioned that we're still very early in the technology, the equivalent of 1993 to the internet. I was born in 1993, funnily enough. But uh, you, you already had uh, created partnerships with really big organizations, including industry giants like PepsiCo. Uh, what are you doing with them? So the, um, what, what we've been doing at, at, at Zilliqa is uh, we've been looking at adoption in two different ways. One is that we have set aside a significant grants program to help uh, developers who want to build, um, uh, you know, decentralized apps on top of Zilliqa. And um, an amazing uh, success story is, of course, unstoppable domains out of um, San Francisco. Take take a look at them; they they're doing amazing things and and growing very very rapidly. Um, but but. But at the same time, uh, we also wanted to make sure that we could find large industrial scale use cases. And a few years ago, Zilliqa indeed started working with Mindshare, who are part of the WPP group, the advertising giant. And we worked with them on, uh, on, a, on, a, on a pilot project to show indeed how you could take the advertising, the digital advertising um, supply chain and make it a lot more efficient. And uh, in, in fact, we, we worked with Mindshare and, and, and um, you know, continue to do so. And in fact, a sister company was born at the end of last year called Achilles, which is focusing on building products for the digital advertising world and um, aimed at bringing uh, transparency and efficiency to a marketplace that we all know is a little bit broken today as consumers. So um, 
So again, watch the progress of, of Achilles and what it ends up doing uh, on Zilliqa as a platform, because uh, there are some extraordinary products uh, and solutions um, coming um, that I think make life better for both large brands as well as us as, as consumers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did mention unstoppable domains, which uh, for, for those who don't know, they, they kind of turn unreadable uh, hash addresses in, into kind of uh, things that mean uh, you could can read really wonderful. Now, besides that, besides that wonderful work, what kind of steps uh, could be done? What kind of work still needs to be done for mass adoption to come to the blockchain? Yeah, a great, great question. So I think that, that some of the work that's underway at Zilliqa um, exactly answers your question. So firstly, whilst we have launched a, a high throughput, um, high secure uh, blockchain platform, there's a lot of work to be done on optimizing that, you know, making it even better and even more secure than it, than it is today. That, that's point one. Point two, which I think is, um, is, is sort of forefront of our thinking right now, is that we want to make uh, we, we want to make this technology much more usable, and that means streamlining the the uh, developer experience. It means building toolkits around Zilliqa that just make this very very much simpler to use. I, I think for anybody that today has has either built a blockchain application or or even done a cryptocurrency transaction. We all know that it is a, a, a not really a very comfortable um, or, or easy uh, customer experience. And so um, this, I think, actually is pretty much core to, to even decentralized finance becoming a, a much, much bigger industry. Um, we, we, we've got to, um, you know, we've got to consider uh, mass adoption comes when developers and entrepreneurs have much more usability, um, user experience simplification. And, and, you know, then we'll start to see ordinary households starting to, to invest in, um, in things like liquidity pools on, on DeFi applications. Um, but also, uh, I, I think, you know, we also need to consider on, on ramps that, that ease the transition between um, fiat currencies and, and these kind of more digitized marketplaces. Mm -hmm. Well, Max, I, I do salute the work you guys are doing over there because I've long said that mass adoption needs to happen only after there's better UI, UX, you know, that it's not only me and you can use it, but, you know, can my grandmother also trade with cryptocurrencies as well? That's all the time we have here today at Block TV. Max, thank you so much for joining us. And for all our viewers at home, if you want more on blockchain, cryptocurrencies, and technology, make sure to check us out at blocktv.com. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter.